Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. If you have a 2.4 multi-air engine guys, that's been used in Dodge Dart guys. Jeep Cherokee Renegade, Jeep Compass, it's been used in Chrysler 200 and Fiat 500X. We'll explain how that, uh, how that system works. You have four solenoids that control the intake valve guys and you have only one camshaft. This is one of the uh, most complicated designs that I've seen. Now the multi-air, the newest multi-air actually has uh, every, every uh, valve, every cylinder is regulated on its own. I think it has eight solenoids. This one has four and it's super complicated. So let's show you guys what it looks like on the inside just out of curiosity if you're working on one. And uh, we'll explain how that thing works. So uh, quick guys introduction. We have more than 200 videos on, on uh, this car guys. And every car we get at the show we have more than 100 videos on a 2.4 multi-air engine taking everything apart so please subscribe guys to the channel like the video we do all that to save you guys as much money as we can let's start on it now so this is the engine guys we removed the valve cover and this is uh, this is amazing design as you can see you have only one okay you have only one uh, camshaft we have timing chain is extremely thick thicker than most of the vehicles nowadays you have only one camshaft for all 16 valves this is a 16 valve engine Two valves, exhaust valves on each cylinder, so that makes two, four, six, eight on this camshaft. And then the intake valves guys are on the back side of the engine. That's where the intake manifold is. And each cylinder has solenoid. Okay, variable timing solenoid. One, two, three, four guys, four solenoids. And as you can see, you don't have a camshaft for the, uh, you don't have a camshaft for the uh, intake valves okay they're going to use the camshaft from the exhaust valves and the solenoid is going to adjust it's going to adjust the valves per each cylinder so the design is quite complicated and if you need to remove or replace solenoid you have to take quite a few things apart we have the video on the channel now we're going to remove that plate here and we're going to get to the solenoids and show you guys okay what they look like and what it looks like on the inside so let's do that now so now guys, okay, I'm going to use here uh, the impact with a Torx 30 so it start looking a bit. All the tools and parts that we use in our videos could be found in the description of the video below. And we're going to remove these bolts here now. Okay, you can see how many you have. That impact is amazing, so if you want to check it out, we'll have it in the description of the video below, you can find the link, it saves you so much time. Oh, I dropped this one in the spark plug hole, that's why I should have always spark plugs, so if something falls you can pull it out. Otherwise you have to take the engine apart to get it out. Now, that plate, we can gently, guys, okay, grab that plate and pull it out, as you can see, just like that. So we need an Allen wrench, six millimeter now, okay. And right here, guys, we have, okay, a few bolts that we will need to remove by hand, okay. It, it looks like those are extremely tight, so what I'll do, I'll break them loose by hand. Now, okay. We have torque specs on that engine videos, guys. will come for torque specs and all that stuff, so you know what to expect. I just want to get them loose, then I'll use the impact, so we can save some time. Make sure it goes all the way in. Because those Allen wrenches are super easy to strip, guys. Okay. Hold on now, we need to explain you how to disconnect those as well. Okay, this one got a little bit tight. So let me grab this one and see if I can get this one. Luz, I just have one more now. Okay. Now, I'll get the impact, guys, and I will remove each one of them now. But before we continue, we're going to disconnect the solenoids. Now, right here, that yellow thing, you need to push it back. Push 
down on the clip, pull it out. Okay, same thing for those. Never ever grab for the wires, guys. If you grab for the wires, you can pull them out of the clip and damage the clip. So if it doesn't want to come out, just press it harder. Same thing on this one here. We also need to disconnect now, okay, the timing solenoid right here. So the same thing, that yellow thing needs to, uh, excuse me, the timing sensor. This is not solenoid, this is sensor right here. And later, okay, we need to just get it out of the bracket here. Okay, it will come out any minute now. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, perfect. Now I can go ahead and remove each one of those now. Now it could be under pressure guys, depending where your valve stop and all that. Uh, you need to guys, okay now it's a little bit complicated. Uh, in order not to damage your engine guys, you need to bring it to where, okay, the pistons are in the middle, okay, and you don't have any pistons at TDC point because you can damage something that way. How you check that? Okay, our engine is completely seized, we're taking it apart, so we cannot move it, but you remove the spark plugs, guys, and once you remove the spark plug, you're going to get a push rod that fits inside, and you're going to turn the engine by the crankshaft, okay, and you're gently going to hold that push rod and see when Cylinder 1, 2, 3 and 4, all of them are leveled. When they're leveled guys, it means that they're in the middle of the engine and they're far away from the valves. Otherwise, okay, you can damage something guys. So always have to be careful not to bend valves or anything like that. That's how we usually do it. Maybe it's not the correct way. Maybe there is another way to do that. We don't have the manual, so we work on everything on, on our own. So, now guys, what we are going to do, okay, this thing, we will need to get a screwdriver, actually, okay. To start it somewhere, okay, so we can, okay, we can pry it up, you can see like that. Let me see now what we have on the back side holding here. Okay, it looks like I just have a few bolts holding. From what I can see. Okay, this board right here is still holding, a little bit. Okay, all those are used now. I'll go ahead, grab it now guys. Okay, this is the lifter here that needs to be on top of the valve. And we'll gently grab it now. Okay, the lifters may fall off. Okay. And we will pull it out, okay? Just like that. So let me go ahead now, guys. Okay, and show you. Okay, we're going to put it on a piece of plastic so I don't damage it. Show you what it looks like now. We have, guys, lifters right here, hydraulic lifters that go right here. So those are very important lifters, guys. And on the back side, you have more lifters now. Okay, right there. All those are hydraulic lifters for the valves, as you can see, guys. Those are hydraulic lifters right here. So this is it, guys. This is the whole assembly, okay. Uh, let me turn the light on a little bit to see better. Uh, 
as you can see guys how that functions now each solenoid guys control two valves and if you lo look on the other side okay the hydraulic valve lifters are right here you can see you have eight of them eight valves so uh, that's how that system works with that being removed now okay you can definitely see each of the valves okay right here uh, the only thing now that is still holding here is you need to take the timing chain cover and all that stuff to take apart uh, more things but you can see that multi air that uh, that's uh, what it looks like guys on the inside that's uh, how complicated that thing is and i would definitely recommend to change more oil more often because if you get those solenoids dirty okay there is no way to remove and clean them and you need to replace the whole body which is very expensive so quick video guys to show you how that thing functions thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time